How's it going folks? Hope you had a great weekend. This is Jeff Benjamin with Cellular. I'm taking a look at iOS 16.2 developer beta three. Yes, I am a little late to the party here, but going to go in depth talking about the new always on display features. Of course, the new shortcuts, battery status feature. Also, I'm going to talk about emergency SOS satellite connectivity, and I'm going to show you a little trick that can be handy if you want to test out cellular connectivity, even if you're not lost in the middle of nowhere. Check it out. So folks, hit that subscribe button if you appreciate videos like this. It definitely helps out and also thumbs up if you like 4K 60 HDR videos. Okay, so like we normally do, I'm gonna go into settings, general, and go to about. And we're gonna see the iOS version along with the build number. So build number 20C5049E for those keeping score at home. But it gets a little bit more exciting this time because when you go to software update, Look what we have here, the very first iOS rapid security response update. And this is a new mechanism that allows Apple to ship security updates more frequently. So this initial iOS security response 16.2a comes in at 96 megabytes and it's just for testing purposes. So it doesn't actually do anything. So you just tap download and install. You'll see security response requested. And then you'll see it says preparing security response. And then eventually, this will take a little bit of time and then eventually you'll see where it says download it and then you're ready to install. So there we go. See, it says download it and then you just tap the install now button. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So let's go ahead and install the rapid security response update, put in our passcode and there you'll see verifying security response and the screen turns black and reboots. So I put a little timer here just to show you how quick these rapid security response updates are. I mean, they're actually pretty fast. They're not like a normal OS update. So this will not interrupt your workflow very long. It allows Apple to push these super important security fixes without having to roll out an entire OS update. So you can see 27, 28, 29, 30 seconds in, and about 31, 32 seconds, this update installed, this rapid security response. And you can see right here, your iPhone is now up to date with iOS rapid security response 16.2a. So now we'll just go ahead and unlock and now we'll venture over to settings again. And let's see what we have under general software update. You can see iOS is up to date 16.2 parentheses a. All right. So now let's go up to about and you see iOS version 16.2a. So apparently the rapid response updates will include a letter after the numerical version number. So if you have two security rapid responses, perhaps you would have 16.2 parentheses B, for instance. So on the iOS version page, as you can see, you have both your iOS version, release note details, and then you have the rapid security response details. So they're separate. And now you can also remove the security response if you want to, just tap remove, confirm, and then you'll see preparing removal. And this will take just a little time and then eventually it's going to prompt you to restart your phone and it'll do so automatically after a certain elapsed time period. So you can see iOS security response 16.2 will be removed in six, five, four, three, two, one seconds. So it wants you to restart. It'll do it by itself. And again, let's start our timer just to see how long it takes to uninstall this time. So installing was about 31, 32 seconds. Uninstalling, I'm going to guess, is going to be within the same ballpark. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. What do you think about these security response updates anyway? Do you think it's a good idea? Are you happy that Apple is finally implementing such a feature? I think it's a great idea. In fact, I'd say it's been a long time coming, to be honest with you. All right, so 33, so about 33, 34 seconds. I was able to uninstall, and you'll get a confirmation telling you that it has been removed this time. So let's go ahead and just verify, go back to settings, general, and we'll go back to software update. And you can see now it's going to prompt you for that rapid response update again, because we uninstalled it. And if you go back to about, you can see back to 16.2 and you just have the iOS version, no security update at all. All right, let's talk about new always on display options. So up until the iPhone 14 pro, the iPhone 
always went to a black screen whenever you locked the device. But now with the 14 Pro, you can see the always on display in action. That allows you to see things like your time and date, widgets, your wallpaper, and even notifications. And of course, you can tap the screen to wake it up and see everything in a brighter live view, just like that. But not everyone was really feeling the, the way it was implemented, including yours truly. So Apple has made some changes here in 16.2 beta 3. You can see how it compares. This is the 16.1 release. Always on display was basically just on or off. But now here in this latest beta, you get more options and you even get this nice description. Always on display dims the lock screen when, what, what? when you lock your device or leave it idle while still showing helpful information such as the time, widgets, and notifications. Okay, so you tap on that, now you get the global on-off toggle that you had before, but now in its dedicated panel. So if you turn off always on display, you lock your device, you get a black screen just like you've had for, you know, 13 generations of iPhones up until the iPhone 14 Pro. So turn that back on, of course. Now I'm gonna show you how you can toggle and have granular settings so you can actually turn your wallpaper off while keeping the always on display active. So this is much more like an Android device, how they implement the always on display because you have your time, your date, you have the dark screen in the background, uh, but here you can still see your widgets, you can still see your notifications and you tap it and everything sort of wakes up and then you see your wallpaper. So that works much more like your typical Android device with its always on display implementation. You, of course, leave it idle. It goes back to a black screen. Now, let's go back in and turn off show notifications and we're gonna lock our device again. So that gives you the black screen with the widgets, the time, the date. You tap though, you get your notifications along with your wallpaper. So you can see it hides the notifications as well until you tap your device to wake it up. So this is definitely a step in the right direction as far as customizing the always on display. I know a lot of people were clamoring for additional options and hopefully this is just the beginning. Hopefully Apple really allows users to go in and customize this to an even higher degree. What do you think? Let me know down below. You also have new shortcut battery level action variable. So let me show you what I mean here. So we go into this shortcut I have created here, which uses the battery level action. Let's compare it to the previous iOS 16.1. You see no variables for get battery level, but here in 16.2 beta three, you get two additional configurable variables. So you have, of course, battery level, and then you have is charging or is connected to charger. So let's test out the first one. 87. So that of course corresponds to the current battery level. So let's go in and change that variable to is charging. And then we'll double tap and we'll see what it tells us. No. Let's go ahead now and plug in a lightning cable, hopefully soon to be a USB-C cable for the iPhone 15. <laughs> now let's double tap on get battery status. Yes. So yes, it is charging. Now let's change that variable up again to is connected to charger. Yes. Yes, it is. Let's unplug it. Let's run it again. No. No, it's not. Very nice. Okay, so let's talk about some tweaked music app animations for live lyrics. So here is the music app on the left side, you see 16.1. Uh, and then on the right side, you can see the current beta. So here, notice what happens as I scroll up, you can see the transport controls and you can basically tell it just lacks an animation outright, it's just on or off, right? But here, you can see how it subtly fades away like that. So very subtle effect, obviously, but it just makes the experience feel nicer. Now this feature obviously isn't a beta feature, but I wanted to, to talk about it because it's a big deal. This actually launched with iOS 16.1, emergency services or emergency SOS via satellite. Now, obviously the emergency SOS feature has been a part of the iPhone experience for a while, so for instance, you've long been able to initiate an emergency call simply by holding one of the volume buttons and pressing and holding the side button at the same time. And of course, the medical ID has been a thing in iOS for a while as well. So, so all these features sort of work together in concert with one another, including the new crash detection functionality, which can alert emergency services on your behalf if you have a car crash, which hopefully never happens. But you can see my emergency contact already located there. But the thing I really wanted to talk about is the emergency SOS via satellite demo. You can actually try this out to see how it works. Now, 
in the case of an emergency, say you're stuck in a national park with no cellular reception from any carrier, you try to dial 911, you're not getting any sort of signal, your iPhone 14 will recognize this and connect to a satellite and allow you to communicate with emergency personnel via text message. Now, satellites are far away, right? And they travel at a very high rate of speed. The cool thing, Apple has a built-in questionnaire that they've created in a special text compression algorithm that makes the data very small. So you're not having to worry about bandwidth problems. You can easily get these messages directly to authorities or to a relay center, which will talk to authorities in your behalf. So it's really cool. Apple thought about everything basically. Now you technically should be outside when testing this out and your cellular connectivity will be temporarily turned off as well but I'm indoors because I'm filming and guess what? It still works. It really just goes to show you how Apple has designed the iPhone 14 in such a way that it's able to communicate with these satellites uh, without really doing much or changing the way you use your phone. You don't have to hold it weird or anything like that. You do have to rotate sometimes to calibrate and to angle your iPhone so that it has the best connection to the best satellite that it should be connecting to given your location. What's cool is you have this really nice, easy to use visual UI that really makes it super simple and super easy to note when you are actually pointing in the right direction with your iPhone. You can see right there, the visual indicator, you can see the satellite and whether or not it's within the range that it needs to be for the most efficient connectivity. But with that being said, I'm indoors and I've noticed that I actually don't really even have to often point at the exact direction because even with a poor connection, it still ends up going through and still ends up connecting okay. And I'm gonna show you that here a little bit later in a real test, not with emergency services, but with the Find My app, because the Find My app now has built-in functionality for satellite connectivity as well. So your location, your medical ID will be shared. It will also notify, or you have the option of notifying your emergency contacts. You can even share the conversation with the emergency personnel, with your emergency contact, along with your location. And that's nice because if you're off the grid, obviously the person that may be worried about you is not going to be able to actually communicate with you. So it's nice for them to be able to at least see that conversation and how it's progressing. Now this demo isn't actually a live demo. You're not actually talking to emergency personnel, but the actual satellite connectivity is a live thing and it actually is the real deal. So keep that in mind. Oh, and one last thing, you get that little cute satellite indicator in the upper right hand corner. Now, just to recap, when you're off the grid, you try to dial 911, it's going to try your cellular connection first. Even if it's not your actual provider, if it isn't able to connect, then it's going to give you the option to text emergency personnel. Now, here's one of the features that I really think is cool, and that is find my location via satellite. So under the me tab in the find my app, you're now able to share your location via satellite when you're off grid. So right now you can see sending your location via satellite is available whenever there is no cellular or Wi-Fi networks and you have a SIM card installed. So it's not gonna allow me to do that right now. So I say, hey, why don't I just disable uh, cellular connectivity and try to fake like I am off grid? Well, it knows better. And it's gonna say, hey, sending your location via satellite is available whenever there are no cellular or Wi-Fi networks and you have a SIM installed. So it's basically like you don't have a SIM installed with cellular disabled. But here is a trick that I learned. So. If you go in, make sure you have cellular enabled, go into your settings, cellular, select your phone line, and then tap where it says network selection. Now I'm a T-Mobile user, but I'm gonna tap network selection and I'm going to disable automatic. And then it's gonna display other cell carriers that I can try or attempt to connect to. So turn that off again, just keep kind of toggling it. And I want it to show me like Verizon or AT&T. All right, so there we go, AT&T. Obviously, I'm not an AT&T customer, I'm a T-Mobile customer, so when I try to connect to AT&T, guess what happens? It's gonna think I'm in the middle of Yosemite or something, like it just doesn't have a cellular connection. You're gonna see no service, SOS only, yet my cellular connection is still enabled, so it meets all the criteria to be able to use emergency SOS. So if I actually dial 911 now, it would allow me to go through that, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually use here the Find My app and use the Send My Location option here. And this is a way to test out this new satellite functionality without actually contacting emergency services because right now you're just sharing your location with your friends. So 
Let's go ahead and send my location, just tap that. And now it's going to establish a satellite connection. So satellite available soon. And now I have an iPhone 14 Pro. So if I swipe up, I can actually throw that into the dynamic island. And what's really cool, you can actually see, if you look closely in the dynamic island, you can see the satellite location as you rotate, just like that. That is really cool. Uh, and there you can see as the island expands more information, you can also tap it to view the full interface. So it's trying to connect, find that satellite, keep pointing at satellite location to send the location. So it's sending right now. And even though I don't have a cellular connection or a Wi-Fi connection, my friends are going to be able to know my location here in just a second. And we're done. So it's gonna show the latitude and longitude in the location box. There's no name streets or anything like that because you're off the grid. You can see when it was last sent and you can only send every 15 minutes. So there is a 15 minute threshold between sending these Find My Location updates via the Find My app. So you can see right here, now you can see the message Jeff sent you their location via satellite because they have no other network available. And you also get the little satellite icon right there by the avatar uh, to let you know that it is using satellite. So ladies and gentlemen, that is my look at iOS 16.2 developer beta three and comboed with the new emergency SOS via satellite functionality. What do you guys think about these new features and changes? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with Cellular.